Hey guys, wanted to make a Lantern Rites Festival video. Essentially, I want to cover what we're going to be getting when the event drops tomorrow on February 10th at 10 a.m. for people here in the West. And for, of course, people in the East, they'll usually start around 12 hours earlier. So I'm going to be covering what we're going to be getting so people can hit the ground running right away. So of course the Lantern Rite Festival is split into multiple parts. We got the All That Glitters part which is essentially the story quest and you're going to be learning about the Lantern Rite Festival that they're having and then it leads into the Lantern Rite Tales which is essentially the quest and event stuff you'll be doing for NPCs and the Theater Mechanicus part which is a tower defense mode unrelated to the story but it's just a fun mode for people to explore and then that allows you to purchase things in the Xiao Market with missions completed in the Theater Mechanicus. Now, of course, like most events, we get our own, of course, BP period exclusive events for the Lantern Lit Sky Battle Pass. You'll have a ton of missions to complete to get more XP to level up your Battle Pass faster. This event, of course, starts at the 10th of February at 10 a.m. EST again, and you have to be ranked 23 or higher to, of course, start this event. And Xiao Story Quest will launch with this event as well, and you'll have to start that and finish that before you even start this event. Now, with basically all events like usual, this is split into essentially three parts, with the first part being unlocked tomorrow when the patch drops, and then of course the next part will be four days later on the 14th, then four days later after that on the 18th, so it's kind of spread across over a period of a week essentially, so that you don't just finish everything on the first day. We got the All That Glitter story duration quest, the origin of the lanterns on the 10th, current deep beneath the lanterns on the 14th, and finally light upon the sea on the 18th. Of course, unlocking and finishing those will unlock subsequent lantern tales for the story. And of course, we have the Stand By Me, which is an event where you can pick and choose your own free 4-star leeway character. The Theater Mechanicus, as said before, is a defense tower defense mission, and then Zhao Market is tied to that. It has three stages as well, 10th, 14th, 18th, you see the pattern here. And those will have shop items that you can buy by completing missions in the Theater Mechanicus. Now of course we have all that glitters, which is the story part. You finish each story part when they unlock, and then you'll be able to do the subsequent parts in the Lantern Rite Tales. And the Lantern Rite Tales is essentially just do a quest for NPCs. Not really too different from thing like doing bounties and requests for NPCs, but there'll be a variety of them. And you'll have to complete them to get Mora, Primo Gems, and this thing called Festive Fever. And of course, upon completing enough Lantern Rite Tales, you will get access to the next Lantern Rite Tales, but you have to first, of course, complete the All That Glitter story before it. So, of course, we got the first part, Origin of Lanterns, then it leads to Lantern Rite Tales 1, then, of course, you unlock Currents of the Deep beneath the lanterns, and then which unlocks Lantern Rite Tales 2. And this Festive Fever resource is essentially going to mark at the top of your Lantern Rite Festival overall, and that will unlock the next stage as you complete. And, of course, just like usual, you'll need to past the milestones and wait for the quest drop to start it. So the 10th, the 14th, the 18th. Same pattern here. So it starts with we've only just begun to guess flock from afar and then finally glow of a thousand lanterns. Now before we cover the Theater Mechanicus, because it's pretty dense in content and what it is, we'll be covering that towards the end, we'll have of course the Zhao Lantern. And you'll need this Zhao Lantern resource to actually complete Lantern Rake Tales requests from NPCs, and of course to do Theater Mechanicus challenges. Not unlike things like resin basically, you get the Zhao Lantern resource by crafting it, and then use the Zhao resource to actually access the event and do the event. All you have to do is collect three different resources, and each resource is farmable by doing things in the open world. So if you've got your lantern fiber obtainable from harvesting plants, you got your wick material obtainable from killing hillatrol type enemies and fatui elites, and then of course the plostrite shard which you can get from harvesting auras, killing geofishap hatchlings, regular geofishaps, and stone high lava trolls. You need one of each to craft a Xiao lantern, of course finally you got the Xiao lantern and you could use that to access the theater mechanicus quest or of course do requests for NPCs in the lantern right tales. And then finally, of course, we have things like the Zhao Market and Stand By Me. We've got Stand By Me, lets you pick a four star Liu Wei character. We got Jiang Ling, Xin Yan, Beidou, Ning Wang, Jing Ku, and of course, Chang Yun. You can select them when you get 1000 Peace Talismans from the Theater Mechanicus quest, and you could only redeem it once, of course. So make sure you redeem a character that you really want to use, or someone that will boost your team very well. And of course, the Zhao Market will also use Peace Talismans, and each stage unlocks, like usual, 10th, 14th, 18th, with different resources you can use the Peace Talismans on to purchase stuff. 
Now, finally, we have the Theater Mechanicus, which is the big bulk of the event, which actually has its own unique gameplay mechanics and fun stuff. For those who haven't experienced it before, essentially this is going to be like a tower defense. There's going to be ranging difficulties, and you unlock the next difficulty by be beating the first stages. You'll also then, of course, unlock more challenging things, and also have access to stronger and more powerful towers. And they call these towers basically Mechanicuses. And then each of them will have a max level. So of course the stage details has six total stages, each with their own challengeable difficulty that you can scale up to, which will in turn increase the amount of rewards. And it uses this resource called Veneficus, which is essentially the resource you'll be using to craft and upgrade your Mechanicus, which are basically the towers that are going to be placed on the ground that will do your attacks for you. You can't really attack actually when you do this mode, you'll actually have to rely on these Mechanicus. Of course, each, of course, difficulty maxes out. We got special mode, blink of an eye, scaling all the way down to difficulty one. And of course, just like the hypothesis events, the reward multiplier increases as, of course, you choose a harder difficulty. And each stage has a max difficulty with the final stage having access to a reward multiplier of times three. And of course, you max mechanicus level is also capped during each stage. And those max levels are upgraded on how you do it. And like all of them, you'll have access to the first three stages by completing the first part of the theater. And then afterwards, you'll be able to unlock stage four and five on the 14th if you finish everything before. And then stage six, once you reach the final stage on the 18th. Now, let's cover quick overviews. Rules, of course. You need one Zhao Lantern, like mentioned before, to actually access and do this event. You'll need to spend one Zhao Lantern every time you do this. So if you do everything, all six stages, you'll need at least six Zhao Lanterns. But you will likely need more to, of course, unlock all the stuff in the shops. Then, of course, you'll be able to get into a stage where there's these little square platforms, which will allow you to place your Mechanicuses, which are these constructs that do certain things. They'll each do their own elemental type damage, and you won't be able to affect the damage yourself directly, but you will be able to use your E skill. No bursts are allowed, no attacks are allowed, but you can use your own E skills. So that means travelers that have access to good reaction mechanics with certain things will be able to do a lot of damage. Say someone like Kaya, who has a very low cooldown E, you could chain him with a, for example, Spark. Mechanic, mechanic Eye, which they have here on the bottom, and then of course you do a Melt Reaction, and that's a ton of damage potentially on monsters. Like each stage, there are these lines that will go across the map telling you the direction the enemies are going to be going in. And of course you'll have to spend your Venificus resources to construct these structures to place on the field to help you do damage and protect your base essentially from getting destroyed. And it'll also cost it to upgrade, but it'll cost less if you want to reconstruct, which is essentially replace a tower you have on that spot with another one, or you could dismantle it for a very small portion of your Venificus back. You can also do this event in co-op, but it is also shared between everyone when you build your towers. So if it's four towers, it's only four towers for everyone involved. So essentially, if you have four players in, you'd also you'd all be able to place just one tower. And also, each upgrade maximum is scaled for each player, but only the certain player that has it unlocked can upgrade these towers to a max level. But if a player places it that has a lower max level for Mechanicuses, They'll, you only will be able to upgrade it to that max level. So say a player has only completed stage 1 and they place a tower down. You, as a player that's finished all the stages, would still only be able to level up this Mechanicus only to the max level that the current player has on that tower. But of course, if you place your own tower, able to upgrade to the max possible level in that stage. So on stage 6, it would be level 10. But a character that only has completed a short amount of stages would not be able to do that. Of course, you could also press the P button when you're doing this stuff after you've placed all your towers, you set up your structures and defenses, you can press P to immediately start the wave instead of prepping. So you can, just like regular tower defense, skip the wait time and immediately go into the action. And of course, each action, monsters will start pouring in, they will ignore you, they won't do damage to you, but they'll just be walking across trying to get to the end. And of course, you can't gain energy. Again, can't use elemental bursts, can't deal damage to them, but of course the Mechanicus will have effects, regular E skills to, of course, create effects. Like here they got the frozen effect because there was a blue uh, Hydro and a Cryo Mechanicus in vicinity. Of course, you could bring your own, say you want to bring a Pyro, put Globa down, you apply Pyro, and then you apply a Vaporize with a Hydro. There are also certain stages that have different effects that you can pay Veneficus to to activate certain effects that will destroy enemies. Like this one here would activate a wind effect which would blow enemies up and then potentially kill them. 
Of course, you can see on the top left side how many waves, how many enemies left, what conditions are to succeed, your beneficus remaining, and also how many structures you have in place and how many the cap is. Now, of course, upon completing a stage and actually successfully finishing it, you'll be getting some beneficus sigils depending on the things you've actually picked before you start the challenges, and these things will be used to unlock new mechanicae or upgrade them currently. Of course, each stage has features just like the hypothesis event, telling you what monsters there are, telling you what mechanicus you have access to, the stage, what it looks like, and of course, the challenges available. So, of course, you know, things you have access to, like what you have to do, like do more damage to an enemy, complete the stage, do X or Y, do not have X or Y happen, and you'll get more verificus sigils throughout. There's also this thing called Mystic Arts, essentially allowing you to boost yourself or put a demerit on yourself to get those boosts. Just like the hypothesis events, like here you can get the cryo mechanicai cost minus 20%, or there might be one in the future where it's like everything costs 20% more, so it'll be more challenging, but you will get additional beneficus points. Of course, upon finalization, you'll be able to see everything in the challenge, seeing exactly how many points you're able to acquire before the final challenge complete, and you get your reward multiplier depending on the challenge level. Then, of course, in that, there is this armory section where you can actually spend those Beneficus sigils to upgrade or unlock new Mechanicae. And then, of course, every one of them has its own specific feature, like, for example, the water one, the hydro one, attacks opponents in an AoE, dealing hydro damage, applying wet status, good combination with certain ones to get certain reactions as well. Of course, you can upgrade them and they get max level, boosted damage is essentially generally speaking maybe boosted range more attack speed there are of course six total stages to unlock first and then the final stage being the special ones finally when you're finally done you get peace talismans at the end of that when you finally complete each stage and then with that being said you can use those peace talismans on the Zhao market later or of course to save up 1000 to get your free four star leeway character and then spend it on the Zhao market and you can see there's also different challenges to unlock Peace sigils, clearing just the first stage on certain difficulty or higher will net you a bit, so it'll only require just a little bit of playing and you'll be able to get your free 4 star character. Now, we've basically covered just about everything, there's only one last thing of course, the login event doesn't start tomorrow unfortunately, starts on the 11th right when reset happens, so basically on the 11th 4am reset happens, you get access to the login event, and that's where we get of course our 10 intertwined fates over 7 days, 1 on the first day, 80,000 more after, 2 intertwined fates 3rd day, 18 mystic enhancement or 4th day, 2 on the 5th day, 8 heroes wait on the 6th day, and finally ending up with 5 on the 7th day, giving us a total, of course, of 10 intertwined fates. This quick here has the overview of everything we need to talk about on Genshin Impact's website, of course, and they have the quick overview here. You got your festive fates, stage 1, and then stage 2, and then stage 3, 4 days of parties again, 10, 14th, 18th, different resources, different quests things you need to buy, of course. And the final thing we have, we did get a confirmation of our second weapon banner, the Epitome Invocation, which we will get our Wolf's Gravestone, which is an incredible greatsword, and of course the Staff of Homa, which means potentially our third and final banner for 1.3 in Genshin Impact is going to be none other than a special character people have been waiting for, the Pyrolancer Hu Tao. Now that's all I have today. Thanks for watching guys. Like this video if you can, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys around. Bye.